Hi everyone! Welcome to the MLTI 2.0 series, Recipes for Project-Based Learning. My name is Tracy Williamson, and in this episode, I'm welcoming special guests, my fellow ambassadors and educators, Rob Dominic and Yu Hong Soon. Project-based learning is like running a restaurant, where your students are the business managers, architects, menu planners, wait staff, and chefs, all working together as a team to deliver a delicious meal to customers in the end. In this series, we're talking about just a few of the many ways to bring project-based learning into your classroom, along with some educational technology tools you and your students can use to enhance the experience. This week's episode of Recipes for Project-Based Learning is all about the Sustainable Development Goals and STEAM Solutions. Described on the United Nations website, the Sustainable Development Goals are the blueprint to achieve a better and more sustainable future for all. They address the global challenges we face, including poverty, inequality, climate change, environmental degradation, peace, and justice. They include 17 goals that the United Nations adopted in 2015, with the agreement to meet by the year 2030. The goals can be sorted into five categories to help understand them, also known as the five P's of the SDGs. The first P stands for people. This includes social goals such as no poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality education, and gender equality. The planet goals are all around the environment, like clean water and sanitization, responsible consumption and production, climate action, life below water, and life on land. The third P is for prosperity. The economic goals of affordable and clean energy, decent work and economic growth, industry, innovation, and infrastructure, reduced inequalities, and sustainable cities and communities. The fourth P is the goal for peace, justice, and strong institutions. And the fifth P is for partnerships for the goals. The Sustainable Development Goals directly correlate to the three pillars of sustainability developed in 1987 by a UN-sponsored commission. As teachers, we want to bring the world into our classrooms to make learning relevant and meaningful, to give our students agency and to empower them to make a difference as global citizens. One way to do this is by integrating the sustainable development goals into our curriculum. In September 2015, the United Nations gathered together 193 sovereign states to agree on a vision of what our world could be. The result was a set of 17 global goals to be reached by the year 2030. End poverty, gender equality, clean water, clean energy and peace. To achieve these ambitious goals, the UN also crafted a list of specific targets and actions to be taken by governments, corporations and individual citizens. Teachers all over the world are currently using the 17 Sustainable Development Goals to build global citizenship in students. They are designing action-driven service learning projects that tackle the global challenges, sometimes at local level. Students are learning about the world, 
building academic skills and making a real difference all at the same time. These teachers have formed global communities of practice to share support, ideas and resources, both in person and virtually. This kind of service learning can be incredibly powerful when designed intentionally. Service without learning can be shallow or even irresponsible. If our students explore the root causes of issues, listen to stories of real people impacted by the goals and reflect on their role, it leads to deeper connections and better solutions. Global citizens ultimately feel that they can have a genuine impact on the world around them, that they can be active participants who identify and create solutions. So teaching the global goal should always be action driven with a focus on the why, who and how beyond the what. The reason why I teach the ESDGs is the same reason why I became a teacher. I want to make an impact on the life of as many people as I can. And when I teach a group of students, I impact the life of every student in my class. When I teach the SDGs, I make sure that the impact goes beyond these four walls. And I make sure that the students are able to make an impact themselves. Great progress has already been made with these goals as people everywhere, especially young people, collaborate and innovate to create real, lasting change. At their essence, the Sustainable Development Goals offer a vision of a better world, a world our students will be inheriting. As global citizens, they deserve a role in making that vision a reality. The SDGs are a great jumping off point for authentic project-based learning and there's an incredible wealth of educational technology tools that allow students to become visionaries, create innovative new solutions and make direct connections to their school, their communities and the world. Project-based learning gives students ownership over their work, allowing the experience to be even more impactful and supporting them in becoming lifelong learners and responsible and involved citizens. The seven essential project design elements from PBL Works Gold Standard PBL outlined each step and component of successful project-based learning. Before setting a goal for a project around the SDGs, you'll want your students to become familiar with the goals and the purpose of the goals. Edpuzzle has a ton of videos with questions and prompts embedded to help your students learn more and check in on their understanding. The more your students know about the 17 goals, the better they will be able to focus on a perceived need that relates to their interests and concerns for the most authentic experience possible. Think about your school and your community in relation to the goals. How can your students make a real impact through their work? Could your school improve on recycling and composting to support the responsible consumption and production goal? Or could your students work with local healthcare service providers to find solutions to improve health and well being in the school or community? There are lots of resources available with lessons and ideas for getting started on a sustainable development goal related project. There are also global projects you can connect to, like the Samsung Solve for Tomorrow Challenge. Hey, I'm Yu Hongsun. I'm one of the MLTI 2.0 ambassadors. Prior to this, I was a computer teacher and a Chinese language teacher at Noble High School for 18 years. I was also an advisor for the Samsung Soul for Tomorrow from 2015 to 2021. Every year, our team was one of the state finalists. In 2018, we were selected as the main state winner and a top 10 national finalist. In 2019, we won the main state first place title again. In those two years, we brought $70,000 Samsung technology to our school. Samsung Solve for Tomorrow is an annual contest to challenge students from sixth grade to 12th grade to solve local issues by using science, technology, and engineering and math. I was interested in engaging my students to participate in the same Sun Soul for Tomorrow because 
I saw it as a great motivational opportunity for my students to apply their classroom science and technology to solve a real-world problem. The project has an immense impact on my students' learning and on our community. The way I got my students involved was to have my students see the relevance of the project. When my students saw that they could actually use their STEM knowledge and skills to solve a real-world problem in their own community and have an impact on the community, they became motivated and actually involved. So in addition to being an MLTI ambassador, I am a music teacher for middle schoolers in Gorham. I teach a general music class, chorus, steel band, and I've been doing that for a little over 20 years now. In 2017, I had just started using Soundtrap with middle school students, and I ended up connecting with another main educator who was working with the Soundtrap team. She introduced me to a really cool project that was spearheaded by Ben Kelly, a STEM teacher in New Brunswick, Canada. He was working on a global album of music created by students using Soundtrap to bring awareness to the sustainable development goals. The project was called Project Sustain. So I hopped on board right away and after a brainstorming session with some students, they selected goal number seven, affordable and clean energy to be the focus of their work. In 2016, there was a severe drought in the Southern Maine and suddenly a lot of manganese appeared in the same Fall River which was where our water came from and contaminated our water supply. As community members, my students felt that they should use their STEM knowledge and skills to help solve the problem. As Rob Dominic did with his students in 3D printing, you can start with a school-based challenge and then grow from there. With a solid foundation on innovating solutions for a problem, students can make a smooth transition into a more global project with the SDGs. One thing I did with my students was to, you know, to help get them in that uh, design thinking and that problem-solving process, I, I would offer to them that, hey, if you can find something in the school that needs to be fixed and you think there's a way that you, we can fix it with the 3D printing, you design it, then you get a free print for yourself. So they can earn print time and design an object that they can make for themselves. Um, so there was a variety of things that students came up with. There were, there were broken window cranks. There were broken shade, you know, you know, little bead shade holders that you would pull on. That, and they were just kind of bouncing around. So they would design new ones. Like little things like that. There was a, a, a rubber casing on a chair in the gym and that chair that was missing and that chair wasn't being used because it would scratch the floor. So there was a whole chair that was not able to be used because of just one protector on the leg missing. So we were able to design and print a new cover for that. So that way it didn't scratch the floor and it was now can be used. Throughout your project, you want to encourage and guide your students to constantly be asking questions. Always collect more data and analyze that data to generate more questions. They start noticing around the school and they they just start getting in that, that problem solving mode by doing it that way. They, they think, oh, well, how could we make this better? Or how could we fix this completely? During the pandemic, we had, um, you know, our water fountains were shut down. Then we had cone cups that were water dispensers that students would use. And um, students weren't able to, to reuse those cups really because they had no place to put them. Right, they drink out of it, and then you couldn't—you'd have to drink all the water at once because it's a cone. It couldn't sit on the desk or anything like that. Um, so it was, you know, just one use, and that was it. So you can imagine a lot of them got used pretty quickly. So we had a contest about designing uh, holders for the cone cups, and this was a simple one. And we took the top three designs that were voted on. Uh, we we. I took all the pictures, all the designs that people had made, probably about 20 or so students that participated and put them on a Google form and had people vote. And the top three got theirs printed and we printed those and distributed them towards all the classes. Each class got three uh, cup holders for the cones. And then that way in the class, if somebody went to go get a drink from the uh, 
with a cone cup dispenser. They had a way to be able to hold it on their desk. It would just sit on their desk and they already could have, have the cone in it and they could not to drink all the water at once and they could reuse their, their cup. Um, so it helped solve that problem. And that was an amazing thing. Um, but it, it came out of the fact that students one day in class recognized the problem. Like, oh man, like this is annoying. We have no place to put these cups. And then I got them sparking like, hey, how can we fix this? And it was a complete side project, but it worked out great. You know, it really got them involved and it, it helped out all the classrooms during the pandemic. As with all project-based learning, empowering your students through voice and choice is a key component to student engagement, curiosity, and feeling a sense of ownership to achieve the most meaningful connection to the work. Students have the opportunity to brainstorm roles, define responsibilities, and choose the role that they want to play in the project. There are 12 students in the team. Each student has their own role and responsibilities. Example, a project manager, a designer, a chemist, a builder, a physicist, a programmer, a communication specialist, etc. They took advantage of one another's strength, focused on their own interests and expertise. They all worked together and performed all of the tasks collaboratively. I had seven students working on the team that year and they all met once a week after school. They started by creating song lyrics using a collaborative Google Doc. And of course, that was after doing a lot of research on affordable and clean energy, on the impact of the goal and what was happening around the world regarding energy. And then they divided the, the music roles amongst themselves. So some were in charge of creating the chord progression, some added solo instruments, others worked with the beats or worked on uh, vocals. And they used a combination of real and MIDI instruments to record the music. So some of the instruments they found in the music room or they were their own instruments or they just used the built-in um, MIDI instruments in Soundtrap. As a project is in progress, students should always stop to reflect frequently to remind themselves of the goal, ensure that the work is still on track, or maybe discover new components or directions that they hadn't realized before. Constant check-in keeps everyone on the same page and allows students the opportunity to flush out opinions, new ideas, and thoughts on the project. There are some great tools to help the reflection process, especially to allow students who might not engage actively in an in-class discussion or who may need longer time to hear others' reflections in order to process their own thoughts. Mentimeter allows for quick polls, feedback, and word cloud generation, and Thought Exchange allows everyone to submit ideas, rate, and comment on ideas. Both tools give a great data set to summarize information for the group. Pear Deck is an add-on to Google Slides that allows for a variety of tools for reflecting and brainstorming. And Flip is a video tool in which students can create a video reflection that can be viewed by only the teacher or by the whole class who can then send video comments, which create a whole other kind of conversation amongst the group. Flip also includes a feature for rubrics and scoring. Padlet can be a great resource not only for brainstorming and collaborative work, but also for sharing reflections in a sticky note type of format. In conjunction with reflection, students can then offer constructive criticism for their work and revise to constantly improve and work towards those end goals. Student-created rubrics can help support constructive feedback and help students accept that feedback as well. Inviting a third party to give feedback can also be valuable for a new opinion or new ideas. Students can use Google Forms for critiques, Google Docs or Pages for creating rubrics, or if they want to get really creative with rubric design, which can make it more fun for some students, they can use Google Slides, Keynote, or Canva to design rubrics. Finally, as with all project-based learning, the project should be shared beyond the classroom. The next and final episode in this series of Recipes for Project-Based Learning will share resources and ideas for creating engaging, eye-catching, and impactful presentations with tools like iMovie, WeVideo, Canva, and more. When students finish the project, they did a presentation to the school board meeting. The school board members were very impressed with students' research and achievement. The project has had a positive impact on the community. It has helped improve the water quality in our community and made our water safe to drink. It has helped prevent our youth, especially 
children under the age of two from potential side effects of manganese. And it has helped to save the town a lot of money. Due to the collaborative nature of Soundtrap, we could have students recording all different parts simultaneously in different areas of the music wing, all in the same recording project. Every single aspect of the song was created and recorded by the students. I offered some guidance along the way, but I mainly just, I provided a place for the students to work. At the end of the year, we presented the project at the annual sale night, and our work has been published publicly on YouTube. In 2018, a group of students recorded a song to support goal number 14, Life Below Water. And in 2019, the students worked towards a song around goal number 15, Life on Land. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic and the sudden move to remote learning in, in 2020, we were unable to complete that project, mainly because we were no longer we no longer had access to the instruments available in the music wing to record. Floating our ecosystem one day at a time Using all these fossil fuels is honestly a crime our problem is a river we need to build a connection In order to change our view we need a new direction working with the sustainable development goals and finding new innovative solutions, computer science and engineering tools work exceptionally well. Part of the mission of the SDGs is finding technology-driven solutions, so using tools like LEGO Spike Kits, students can build their own functional models to show their project impact. Robots like Sphero or Q can help students flush out movement patterns, and tools like CoSpaces or SketchUp allow students to create virtual worlds, communities, or buildings to bring their ideas to life. 3D printing can take a conception and turn it into a real, functional object. So I think that 3D printing could have a pretty significant role in project-based learning. Uh, it, it, a lot depends on what project students are working on, you know, what the learning outcomes are, what will be involved in that, if 3D printing will be appropriate to incorporate or not. Um, sometimes it's not, but when it is, I think it can really enhance the student's uh, process and experience with that project. The, the first and most obvious thing that comes to mind is, uh, you know, having students get involved in that design thinking process. And then 3D printing can help out with that because it, it gets them a, a hands-on prototype that they can get pretty quickly you know usually within 24 hours their print will be ready so if they're looking to you know design a solution test it um, you know if it fails or not be able to iterate it and see again if their new design would be useful and go through that process again and again besides just the the actual physical piece that they get from that 3D printing. They also go through that design process in whatever CAD program that they'll be using. Um, and that has its own benefits as well, where students can think about how things would connect together, what size they need, you know, how to design it so it's functional. Uh, those types of ideas really help hit home and get students that, that hands-on learning piece, which engages them significantly. There are tons of resources from Lego, Sphero, CoSpaces, SketchUp, and more that can be directly tied to project-based learning, especially around creating and presenting viable solutions to problems about the SDGs. Ben Kelly, the creator of the Project Sustain songwriting album, has created an entire Minecraft education world around the sustainable development goals and lessons to accompany if you want to add a gamification twist on learning about the SDGs to support any project. But it was very cool for the students to see their work come together, along with other students from Romania, Germany, Canada, Nigeria, New Zealand, Thailand, and Vietnam, and also other schools in the United States. The students working on the Project Sustained Songwriting Group not only learned about the songwriting process and how to collaborate effectively with others to accomplish one goal, they also learned about the importance of the Sustainable Development Goal and the environmental, social, and economic impact on the world. This accomplishment means so much to me and my teammates and my school as, as a representative. 
it really paves the path to what we as a team and what we can do as a community uh, for the future and what we can accomplish. It also means so much to the future generations as they will be able to learn from our, uh, our accomplishments and, and develop new um, accomplishments of their own. This means a lot to our team and our school as a whole uh, because we've put so much hard work into this project and we've been so dedicated. Uh, I had a lot of fun with this project. Uh, it was awesome to be able to meet some new people and collaborate as a team together. And I was just really excited to be able to give back to my community. If you would like more information or support getting a STEAM project around the Sustainable Development Goals off the ground in your classroom, please reach out to me at tracy.williamson at maine.gov or any of the MLTI 2.0 ambassadors by visiting our website on the Maine Department of Education site. At the bottom of this video, you'll find the slides and resources used in this presentation to use as a guide. If you'd like to earn a contact hour for watching this MLTI 2.0 professional development video, you can find a link below as well. Thank you to Rob Dominic and Yu Hong Sun for sharing your experience with students around project-based learning and sustainable solutions and tools. And thank you for watching.